Saw dudes, I am presenting another melee duplicate build, but this time it's for Dagger Zaws. This video was possible thanks to S, a viewer who suggested the build in a comment. Their concept for a toxin based saw was ingenious, so I had to share it with you all. Thanks again, S. Melee duplicate isn't required for this build, but it is highly recommended for the additional damage and status it provides. Also, this build can be used with any frame and does extremely well without external buffs. As usual, there are timestamps in the description. Let's get started. First, let's go over melee duplicate's perks real quick to establish why it's so good. The Arcane has a 100% chance to duplicate a yellow crit at max rank. This hit rerolls the chance to apply status and also rerolls the critical tier. It duplicates four status procs from stance hits, meaning slash procs can be multiplied. Finally, it works with Shattering Impact and Amalgam Argonac Metal Augur to reduce base armor. The Zaw for today's build is composed of the Iguana Jai 2 Link, Pay Grip, and Ballast Strike. This Dagger Zaw has a base attack speed of 1.25, a crit chance of 14%, a critical multiplier of 2 times, and a status chance of 25%. Status chance is extremely important for scaling in this build. Attack speed is essential since it allows us to apply more status effects in a short time. If you want more base damage and can outsource attack speed, with abilities or arcanes, you can swap the grip. This will lower your base attack speed though, so be careful. Now let's cover the biggest synergy, Amalgam Argonac Metal Augur. It's the only required mod on your Argonac and works similarly to Shattering Impact with a few twists. By the way, Amalgam Serration is only here for the sprint speed bonus. Arrow Periphery is only used to put priority targets to sleep and does work on Acolytes. The effect procs on Arcanac or your secondary weapon, but not your melee. Primary Dexterity is nice, but again, not required as it only will add combo duration. Back to Amalgam Arcanac Metal Augur, which I will now call AAMA because I am lazy. This mod reduces the base armor of enemies by 6, just like Shattering Impact when dealing any damage to enemies with daggers. This means that all damage effects from daggers, including damage over time effects like slash, heat, toxin, electricity, and gas damage will reduce their armor. The armor shred stacks additively with shattering impact, for a total of 12 armor shred on hit, barring any status procs. Okay, so here's the first iteration of the dagger build. This is the comfort loadout and is not tailored to any one faction. All of the footage in the background uses this build as a baseline. The arcanes for all builds mentioned today for our daggers all will be Exodia Force and Melee Duplicate. Exodia Force has a 50% chance on status effect to deal 200% weapon damage within 6 meters. It is affected by the combo counter, stance damage multipliers, base damage, elemental damage, and faction damage mods. Pointed Wind has the best stance damage multipliers of all options, plus it has great horizontal movement and 360 degree coverage for easy ad clear. Tenokai is a must since daggers have a 4 slash proc on their heavy attack and can easily wipe crowds with it. Dreamer's Wrath increases Tenokai opportunity chance by 50% and Tenokai heavy attack crit damage by 32%. Primed Reach is purely for quality of life since her dagger is only average sized. Condition Overload increases her damage scaling with status effects afflicting the target. Blood Rush increases her crit chance to 75.6% at 12 times combo, but this does not consider Gladiator Might just yet. I will come back to this later on. Amalgam Organ Shatter increases crit damage and heavy attack wind up speed. For the most damage, just use the normal version of the mod. Weeping Wounds increases our status chance to 135% at 12 times combo, giving us a 35% chance to apply an additional status effect on hit. This does work with melee duplicate. Primed Fever Strike adds a buttload of toxin damage, which will be one of two damage over time effects that we inflict. Toxin procs have their own individual timers and are not consolidated into one tick over time like heat. This means that we can have armor shredded faster through a Malcolm Arcadac Metal Augur. We are not using electricity damage because we don't have a primed electricity counterpart. Primed Fever Strike's 165% bonus far outweighs the 90% provided by Shocking Touch and does not get the same Archon Shard synergies that I will discuss later on. Shattering Impact is applied on melee duplicate procs for an additional 12 base armor shred per hit. This makes armor shred incredibly fast, however, if you find it unnecessary, you can swap it out for Spring Loaded Blade or an attack speed mod like Prime Fury or Berserker Fury. Gladiator Might increases crit damage by 60% and also grants 10% critical chance per combo multiplier. Combined with Blood Rush, we will have a crit chance of 91% at 12 times combo. This build can be used in base steel path without any issues. It's super comfortable and does not require primer if you don't want to use it. If you are planning to bring this setup into endurance runs, you will need to swap out Shattering Impact for the appropriate primed Bane mod for a 2.55 times damage over time multiplier. Remember, this works for Toxin and Slash procs. If you plan on picking up a Riven for this weapon, the stats you want to chase are any combination of attack speed, critical damage, status chance, a Bane equivalent, or range. If you are not planning to use attack speed mods or arcanes, you should make attack speed your priority. The best negative stats are negative impact, negative finisher damage, and negative critical chance on slide attack. Out of the three, try to get negative impact for more puncture, slash, and toxin weight. So why do we only have 91% crit chance at max combo? 
This is not an oversight, and we are going to make use of puncture procs, which have two effects. The first effect reduces outgoing enemy damage. The second increases weapon critical chance by 5% per proc up to 25% at max stacks. This means we have an effective crit chance of 116% at 5 puncture procs. Even though our primary damage type is Toxin, thanks to Prime Fever Strike, puncture damage makes up 127.2 points of the 561.8 total. This is 22% of the total damage, meaning we have a 22% chance to proc puncture on hit. With the amount of multi-hit present in Pointed Wind, we can easily hit 5 puncture procs on tankier units. We also have melee duplicate re-rolling status and a total status chance of 135% at maximum combo, so there's no real worry about not getting puncture procs. You should also consider using a primer like a Buva Bukor to take advantage of condition overload. It's important to apply as many unique status procs to enemies. The build shown has a magnetic progenitor. It applies viral, magnetic, radiation, and heat status effects. Keep in mind that the microwave effect also counts towards condition overload's bonus, so this comes out to 5 unique status effects. I'm using a secondary dexterity mod on my Buva Bukor because it makes combo duration long without wasting a mod slot. However, if you already have a dexterity mod on your Arganac, it's not required. The best companion for this build is the Panzer Volkophila. This is the same build that I use for almost every slash heavy weapon. However, this companion is especially important for this loadout. Essentially, we're using this Panzer to apply viral status to enemies consistently. If you notice, the Buva Bukor is heavily weighted towards heat damage. This isn't a bad thing at all, but it does mean that the likelihood to proc viral is lowered. Viral Quills applies viral procs easily for increased slash and toxin damage to health. Martyr Symbiosis serves as a failsafe if we take too much damage. Tenacious Bond is incredibly important. With this setup, we are granted a 1.2 times final critical damage multiplier. This buff makes our yellow crits on our Dagger Zaw hit for 6.1 times more damage, up from 4.9. Since we don't make use of orange or red crits much, this is essential. Our toxin damage scales with our critical multiplier, so we want to squeeze in as much CD as possible into our loadout. Panzer Devolution allows our pet to apply viral even in mini worm form. Tandem Bond allows our Volpa Phyla to refresh our melee combo counter on hit since its melee attacks now add to our combo counter. This can be swapped for Contagious Bond for easy priming with Buba Bukor. Vicious Bond allows for AoE armor strip, but it is a bonus and not a main method of defense reduction. Fetch is for quality of life. Alright, now let's break down Archon Shard synergies. If you truly want to put your all into this, you can choose from Crimson, Violet, and Emerald Archon Shards. Crimson Shards offer a flat 25% melee critical damage bonus. This is the most basic Archon Shard choice, but it is really low investment. You might want to try this out before moving on to the other options. Next up are Violet Archon Shards, which require a coalescent fusion of Azure and Crimson Shards. Like their red counterparts, they provide a 25% melee critical damage bonus. However, when our Warframe's maximum energy reserve is above 500, this doubles to 50%. This is more suited for caster frames, so don't feel pressured to use this on low energy max frames. Now comes our most niche option, Emerald Shards. These shards can increase toxin status damage by 30%. This is a flat bonus and does not act like a Bane multiplier. The best use case for this shard is probably on Grendel who has innate armor strip and heavy toxin damage. Combining his kit with our dagger setup can be amazing for melting units and high level endurance missions. Finally, let's cover the ability synergies for this build. This will serve as our helmet section. First up, let's talk about armor stripping abilities. This includes Terrify, Pillage, and Thero Strike. You can use these abilities if you don't want to use Shattering Impact or Argonac. I suggest using these abilities over other options first since they affect more parts of your total setup. Next, there are grouping abilities, which are perfect for Exodia Force's explosion damage. Abilities you can subsume or use are Air Burst, Ensnare, or Larva. Any of these choices are fine, so choose the one that you like using the most. Then we have ability damage buffs, most notably Roar and Nourish. Roar is coded as a Bane mod damage bonus, so it double dips on our Slash and Toxin damage ticks. If you have a high strength, high duration stat spread, Roar can work well, or just use Rhino. Nourish provides innate viral damage on our dagger attacks and applies viral to enemies that hit us. If you don't have a consistent viral primer, this is a great option. That is the whole video everyone. I want to thank you all for the recent support. I've gained so much support since posting Warframe videos and it's really heartwarming. I still plan to make Destiny 2 content, but it's hard juggling two looter shooters. Let me know what you think about the build. As always, thank you all for watching and happy farming.